by Ronald Reagan. And this was, and you constantly hear Republicans saying about how they want to cut taxes and how Ronald Reagan cut taxes. But he was asked, this was actually the biggest tax increase in the history of the country. This is where they tax what you pay your employees. So if you have a, if you have a company and you're hiring people, everything you pay them, you have to pay a certain amount of that, a tax, to the government on just what you pay somebody. So they basically fine you for hiring someone and the, the more people you hire and the more you pay them, the more it, they fine you for doing so. And, and so then we wonder why there's no jobs. Right, because of course what you do is you convert to machinery. Uh -huh. It becomes cheaper than to convert to machinery, so that's what you do. So what about health care? Oh, health care. Oh, I'd like to talk about that <laughs> having been in the industry. It's very, very interesting. Most people don't realize that it costs about a billion dollars for a pharmaceutical firm to put a drug on the market. That's because it has to jump through all these hoops that the FDA requires. And of course, the belief is that it makes the drug safer. Well, it makes the drugs a little bit safer, but it takes a lot longer to develop them. So for example, if a drug is gonna save 10,000 lives a year, and you have to wait 10 years, which is about the average, to get mm -hmm. it, um, it's actually closer to 14, but I'm thinking of, of a set of regulations that was particularly bad. It increased the development time 10 years. So if you would have saved 10,000 lives a year, that means over 10 years you've lost 100,000 lives. And if you've increased safety by only about 100 lives, you have a net mm -hmm. loss. And that's kind of how it works. Not only that, because the drug development time is so increased, the cost is increased too. I calculate that overnight, drug prices, pharmaceutical drug prices, would drop about 80% without mm -hmm. these regulations overnight. So that's what we really need to do is get the price down. We can try cost shifting all we want, but it's not going to really change anything. So this is kind of a protection racket then for the big pharmaceutical companies because they're the only ones who can ever get a drug, a new drug, past the FDA. In a sense, that's true. It's created a cartel. And what's happening now, because the costs are so high, and only three out of ten drugs even recover their research and development costs, the drug companies are starting to merge at an, at an unprecedented rate. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon there's only going to be a few of them. And the problem with that is they get so big that they're pretty inefficient too. Mm -hmm. And that, that means they simply are a cushion of money for all the failures that precede the big winner. Right. And, and not necessarily so efficient at finding the new cures. Well, they're basically become extensions of the government because they're corporate welfare entities protected by the regulation of the FDA. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say they're welfare at this point, but they are protected and it is, it is becoming a cartel. I think that's probably the right word. What's the solution? Well, the solution is to deregulate. If you didn't require studies that kill people, uh -huh then what you would have is you would have development of drugs that was less expensive, you'd have more drugs, you'd have more people saved, but the cost would be much less. So you could replace the FDA with a, 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 a bunch or a group of private competing FDAs. Or certification or firms. Or certification firms that would then, and their reputation would depend mm -hmm on making sure something that they say is safe is really safe. Right, in fact, that's what they used to do before the FDA. They would have in their advertisements, um, our product has never you know, killed anybody by sudden death, which was a problem with biological preparations back in those days. Mm -hmm. They advertised the safety impact of their, of their products, and that actually worked quite well. There were occasions when people didn't think ahead and had a problem. And that, so the regulations save a few lives, like I said, might maybe save 100, but cost 10,000, mm -hmm. or 100,000 even. So there's that kind of a ratio, risk-benefit ratio, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what would you say to a person out there that was thinking of getting involved in the Libertarian Party, or, or get them to look at the Libertarian Party as an option? Well, I'd say that simply think about how you relate to your neighbor on a one-to-one -one basis, then look at how we relate to each other, group to group, 
and you'll see a big discontinuity. Mm -hmm. Now, once you see that, you can apply it to really anything. And of course, when you see that you're being nastier to your neighbor by taxing them and regulating them, it's no surprise to you that it results in bad things like loss of jobs, loss of life, mm -hmm. poverty. So I'd say investigate and see for yourself. So just look into it, look at, look at the facts. Mm -hmm. But you know, how can a person tell which are the right facts? There's so, you get, we hear your opinion, mm -hmm. very little. Mm -hmm. And out there in the world, there, there's so many opinions. How can the person tell that you're right and all the other people out there that are much better funded than the Libertarian Party <laughs> are wrong? How can they tell? Well, I believe that people have common sense. And when they look, they can see. And the first thing that we talked about earlier in this session was how if we relate to each other honestly mm -hmm. and gently, you know, I don't beat you up, I don't steal from you, I don't defraud you or cheat you in any way, we have a good relationship, mm -hmm. or at least a tolerable relationship. But if I'm going to be beating on you and stealing from you, we said we'd have a feud. Uh -huh. Well, it makes sense. But if that happens on a one-to-one -one basis, it's going to happen on a group-to-group -group basis. And that's the kind of common sense I mean. It doesn't take an Einstein to see that the same means get the same ends. Well, thank you very much mm -hmm. for coming out. It's wonderful seeing you today. And for those of you out there that would like more information about the Libertarian Party, you can join us online at www.lp.org. You can call 1-800-ELECT-US and we'll send you out a free packet of information. So thanks again and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on The Libertarian Alternative. Thank you.